Hello, welcome back. So now we're going to go over some examples of what we might need to do here with the exponential distribution. All right, so the first thing we might want to do with the exponential, find the mean, find the variance. This should be pretty easy. Okay, um, so here let's, let's look at this example. Logons of the system with a mean of 25 logons per hour. Okay, so let's let our random variable be, here be um, time of the interval until the first log on. Okay, so what's the mean and standard deviation? Well, we have a formula again for, for mean, for variance and standard deviation, but I'd be willing to bet you could do this without really needing a formula, right? We could just kind of reason this out. So 25 logons per hour, we would want to know when the next logon is on average, right? That would just be the next log on we'd expect in one twenty-fifth of an hour, aka, and you, you could put it different ways, one twenty-fifth of an hour or 0.04 hours, 2.4 minutes. Remember, standard deviation is actually the same. All right, so notice these guys are equivalent. So the mean and standard deviation of the exponential, super simple. Um, there is a formula for this, but you, I mean, really, you could just kind of reason that out. All right, so your, let's look at an example of actually finding a probability here. So same, same deal, same example. All right, we, we've got the same scenario. But now we want to know what's the probability we have no logons in the next six minutes. Okay, so remember, and this is something kind of similar to Poisson as well. All right, I have 25 logons per hour. Lambda... So 25 per hour, but notice my lambda is in terms of hours, logons per hour. So we have to pay attention to the units here. This is asking next six minutes. All right, now we have to make sure that our, our random variable x matches up with the units of lambda. So I can do this one of two ways. I can adjust x to lambda, so six minutes translates to 0.1 hours, or you can also put lambda in terms of minutes. I could do this either way. So 25 logons per hour, right? 60 minutes in an hour. You could also use lambda equal to 25 sixtieths, x equal to six, or you can use lambda equal to 25, x equal to 0.1 you'll actually find that if you do it both ways, it's the same. And we'll, we'll look at that in a second. All right, draw a picture. Here, this picture is using x equal to 0.1. All right, and then I can simply integrate my PDF with lambda equal to 25. So notice x equal to 0.1, lambda equal to 25. You can integrate that. That's not bad. Or I can plug into my CDF. All right, remember, your CDF, call your CDF, it's 1 minus e to the negative lambda x. Okay, so, so you could do this, in this case, one of two ways. Right? I could say 1 minus e to the negative, I could use lambda as 25 over 60, and x as 6, or I could say 1 minus e to the negative 25 times 0.1. Either way, right? those are going to work out to the same thing. All right, so you have a choice here. Again, and we, and we have this choice with any continuous random variable. You can either integrate the PDF or use the CDF, but the exponential is nice because you have a simple, easy CDF that you can use. So personally, I would say go for the CDF, okay? Because it's it just saves you a little work. You don't have to integrate. All right, but notice also one thing here. Okay, when I'm doing a, a greater than problem, all right, we know your CDF is defined as the probability of X less than or equal to some number. Here you're looking for greater than 0.1. Okay, so this 
is one minus, notice here we have one minus our CDF, one minus probability X less than or equal to 0 0.1, all right? When I'm working with my CDF here, okay, I'm gonna make a, make a little space here. Just notice this is one minus this whole expression, all right? So when I say and and one minus when you, when you distribute this, all right, one minus one that's just going to be zero. You distribute the negative that makes this positive. All right, so you'd end up with e to the negative twenty five sixtieths times six, or equivalently down here, same thing, right? But that is one tricky thing when you're working with a greater than and you're, you're working with that exponential CDF, don't forget the one minus, one minus the, and, and distribute that correctly. Okay, that, that can be one sort of tricky thing. Continuing with this example, we've seen what we can do here with the PDF, the CDF, you have a choice there. Do you want to integrate the PDF? Do you want to just plug into the CDF? Um, again, with the exponential, we have a nice, pretty easy to use CDF, so um, probably recommend just plugging in to your CDF. All right, but how do we check this in technology? Well, let's go hop over into Excel. We have a built-in function. If you just type in EXP, just EXP, but like the number E. Okay, so so that's not what we want. We want exponent dist. All right. So our X here. Now remember what. Um, remember what these functions in Excel give you, and pretty much in any type of calculator, all right? They're gonna give you a CDF value, um, or if it's if it's a discrete distribution, you can get a PMF value, all right? But, so here, I'm gonna wanna put, remember X was 0 0.1, Lambda here was 25, okay? Notice Excel does ask for Lambda there specifically, all right? And then it has the cumulative, option here. Now with any continuous distribution for the most part we're going to want this CDF value. All right, but notice it does give me the CDF value. So what were we looking for in our problem? We were actually looking for greater than. Okay, so I'm going to have to go in here and say 1 minus this CDF value. That will leave me with greater than. Okay, and that agrees with what we found earlier. Okay, so we can use that function in Excel, or we can opt for kind of the more visual option here in Minitab. So let's see how to do that. All right, so I'm here in Minitab. Now, if I go to Graph, Probability Distribution Plot, we've seen this before for some discrete distributions. By default, it'll put me on the standard normal distribution, um, but we right now are using exponential. Now, Minitab does its parameters a little bit different way. Okay, you have two parameters. You have your scale parameter and your threshold parameter. Now, what I see a lot of people do here, so remember lambda was 25. So, um, so sometimes I do see people here type in 25. Your threshold is, is where x starts, or the lower bound of x. So here we know x, um, it was a time, so it has to be just something greater than 0. x starts at 0, so that's fine. But let's see what happens if I just put lambda, just 25. All right, I'm going to click OK here. I'm going to double click and shade the area I'm interested in. So we wanted X greater than 0 0.1, so that's right tail, 0 0.1. OK. But this answer doesn't match up with what we got in Excel, what we got working it out with the PDF and CDF. OK, so what went wrong there? Well, if I go to Graph, Probability, Distribution, Plot, View Single, exponential. So actually for the scale parameter, what uh, what Minitab wants is not lambda, it wants the exponential mean. Into Minitab here, so probability distribution plot, view single. Um, if you try to put 1 over 25, I don't think Minitab is going to like that. Yeah, it doesn't like that because we had that, that slash there. Okay, so I'm going to go into Excel 25. Yeah, so 0 0.04. So now I'm going to take that as a decimal and put it in here and see if Minitab likes that. 
Now let's double click, shade our area of interest. All right, and I'm gonna go X value, right tail. Um, we wanted greater than 0.1. Now this should match up with what we found before. All right, and just one more thing that I wanna show you here. When we are doing this in Excel, okay. So remember, um, remember we had some options here. All right, we did one minus x bond dist. We used um, so let's let's put this here. We used x of 0 0.1. We used lambda of um, 25. All right, and we we plugged all that in and we got that. But what if we instead of so lambda was in terms it was 25 logons per hour okay what if instead of and our, and our question was about um, our question was about the probability of no logons within the next six minutes so what if you used x equal to six and you adjusted lambda to minutes so lambda here as 25 over 60 Right, it's going to give me a decimal for that. Right, now I'm going to use 1 minus x upon dist. x is 6. Lambda as this, cumulative. And this should leave me with the same answer. So again, the point there is you can either adjust x to lambda or lambda to x. However you want to do it there. Okay, okay let's look at another example. So same situation, what's the probability that we're between two and three minutes? All right, so here again, so we can, we have options. We can either, we, we have 25 logons per hour, two minutes is 0.33 hours, three minutes is 0.05 hours. You can convert these to hours or I can convert lambda to minutes, either way you want to do it. Okay, so, um, so sometimes it's nicer to have lambda as a whole number, but um, it really just matters on the situation. It, it just depends on the situation. It doesn't really matter. Now in this case, here we've got lambda is 25. We're going from 0.033 to 0.05 because we're looking for in between these two numbers. right? You could have just as easily set it up like this, 2 to 3, 25 sixtieths e to the negative twenty-five sixtieths x. All right, you could have could have set it up that way either, or also dx. All right, you can integrate your PDF, do it that way, or I can use my CDF. All right, notice if we're looking for in between, remember the definition of your CDF. You're looking for between 0.05 and 0.033. So this is equivalent to the probability of x being less than 0.05 minus the probability x less than or equal to 0.033. So you can plug into your CDF that way. Again, either way you want to do it, just notice the CDF, it's going to be 1 minus e to the all that minus 1 minus e to the all that. So. When plugging in to your CDF, again, you got to be careful, distributing the negative, all that stuff that we that we talked about. Right? But either way, you'll end up with the same result. All right, now let's look at this one using technology. So we've already seen how we can do this. Um, when we have an in-between problem, sometimes it might be easier to just go ahead and integrate that PDF because you're, you're doing a definite integral there anyway or you can subtract CDFs. And that idea of subtracting CDFs is essentially what you want to do in Excel there. Okay, so remember you want to subtract that larger number from the smaller number. So if I do it the other way, um, then I'll be in trouble because I'll come up with a negative number and, and that would be silly because we know probabilities can't be negative. Let's hop over here in Excel. All right, so, so what we wanted here, we wanted exponent dist, exponential dist. All right, our first one, 0 0.05. Remember, our larger number, 25 and 1, minus the CDF 
at 0 0.03. So x bar from dist 0 0.03 lambda of 25 cumulative. And there we go. Let's make sure Minitab agrees. All right, we've got our, we already have our distribution up here, so I can just go to shaded area. But this time we wanted middle, All right? And we wanted between 0 0.33 and 0 0.05. All right, so that's, this is probably the quickest, easiest way to do it um, in Minitab here. That's a little bit easier than, than kind of keeping everything straight in Excel. Um, and you could, of course, go ahead and just integrate that PDF as well. So we have lots of different ways to do these problems, um, and that's, that's a good thing because we can kind of check everything out and just make sure everything agrees. Okay, our last example is what's called finding a quantile. So same problem, same, same setup, same situation, right? but we want to know what is the interval of time such that the probability that we don't have a log on is 0.9 or 90 percent. Okay, so notice the difference in what we're doing here and what we've done before. Before, we've been given some interval or some value of x and asked to find the probability. Now we're given a probability and asked to find that interval. All right, so basically what we can do here is we can take that CDF and solve for x. Okay, so we, we take our CDF and we set it equal to 0.9. Right, then I solve for x here. It's pretty easy to do in this exponential expression. Right, we come up with a quarter of a minute there. All right, so, um, so you can do it that way. Um, now this is pretty easy to do for the exponential. That's why we, why we um, show this example here, because it's pretty easy to solve this. Um, not all CDFs are created equal and, and going to be as simple. Okay, so lots of times what you'll want to do if you're, when you're finding a quantile, you'll want to leave that up to technology. Okay, so Excel doesn't have anything built in for this, but we can do this in Minitab. So let's jump back over here to Minitab. Okay, so when I double click here and I go to shaded area, we've used X value before, but this time let's click probability. All right, now you wanted... Um, the interval of time such that the probability no logons occur is, is at least 90%. All right, so I want right tail probability 0.9. And let's see what that gives us. Now, it's kind of weird here because it's, um, it's a little fuzzy there. So I'm going to make that bigger. All right, that gives us 0.042. So that's in terms of, of hours. All right, and that does match up with what we found kind of doing it manually. All right, so I hope these examples were helpful for you. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.